Did you know that, according to recent research, pilots of the Airbus A320 family perform a go-around in only one out of every 340 approaches? Yet, despite its rarity, the go-around is one of the most challenging maneuvers a pilot can execute, especially when done incorrectly. Airbus discovered that, in over 500,000 approaches surveyed worldwide, many crews deviated from standard procedures, leading to unexpected flight paths and energy management issues. Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. In this video, we dive into the critical techniques that ensure a smooth and safe go-around every time. In today's tutorial, we'll explore the following. The surprising reason why over 50% of go-arounds in the A320 don't use maximum thrust, and how this can lead to unexpected flight paths. A powerful new technique called the discontinued approach that can make go-arounds smoother and safer and how to prevent your aircraft from mistakenly following a false ILS glide slope at angles as steep as 15 degrees. Airbus recently conducted extensive research, examining nearly 500,000 approaches across multiple airlines worldwide. This study uncovered that in certain cases, flight crews were not fully adhering to Airbus's standard operating procedures during go-arounds. For instance, when executing a go-around above 1,200 feet above aerodrome level, crews would often modify thrust settings instead of using the takeoff and go-around toga thrust. This has led to unexpected flight trajectories and energy management challenges. Let's take a closer look. The study showed that when performing go-arounds above 1,200 feet, more than 50% of crews did not select toga thrust as recommended. Instead, they opted to adjust engine power manually. This deviation from the standard procedure not only complicates energy management, but can also result in unexpected aircraft trajectories, potentially compromising safety. So, what's the correct procedure? To initiate a go-around, Airbus recommends pushing the thrust levers to the toga detent. This action increases engine thrust to its maximum level and engages the correct flight management and guidance system modes. It also sequences the aircraft into the missed approach guidance programmed in the flight management system. Setting the thrust levers to the toga detent disarms the approach mode and engages the go-around mode, which includes modes like SRS, speed reference system, and go-around track modes. This ensures that the aircraft follows the appropriate trajectory during a go-around. But here's the nuance. Airbus's latest recommendations indicate that if maximum thrust is not necessary, especially in cases where the missed approach altitude is relatively low, flight crews should reduce thrust to the climb detent after initially setting toga. This adjustment reduces excess energy during the maneuver, ensuring a smoother and more controlled climb. Historically, some flight crews have developed their own go-around procedures, which led to non-standard aircraft behaviors, especially in high-energy situations. To address these deviations, Airbus introduced a new technique called the Discontinued Approach Procedure. This technique is designed for situations where a go-around may not require full toga thrust, particularly when the aircraft is at or above the FCU-selected altitude. Here's how the decision-making works. When the aircraft is above the FCU altitude, the crew can opt for the discontinued approach technique instead of the full go-around. Below the FCU altitude, the standard go-around procedure with toga thrust must be applied to ensure sufficient climb performance and safety. By using the FCU altitude setting as a decision point, flight crews can better manage their energy levels, minimizing unnecessary thrust while maintaining control over the aircraft's trajectory. Here's how the discontinued approach procedure works. Step one, the flight crew calls out cancel approach. Step two, leave the thrust levers in the climb detent. Step three, deselect the approach mode. This is done using the approach or localizer push buttons, especially during ILS approaches. Doing this ensures the aircraft does not inadvertently capture a spurious localizer or glide slope beam. Step four, 
The crew then manages the aircraft's vertical and lateral trajectory. Depending on air traffic control instructions, they can select a new heading or re-engage nav mode to follow the missed approach flight plan. Step 5. If the approach is completely abandoned and the aircraft flies past the final waypoint, the crew may need to input a new destination in the FMGC. This could be the same airport for another approach attempt or an alternate airport if diversion is necessary. The goal of these updated procedures is to provide flight crews with better guidance for managing energy levels during go-arounds. By adhering to these refined techniques, crews can avoid unnecessary complexity and reduce the risk of unstable approaches. Some other points to note. During an ILS approach, if the flight crew decides to abort the approach without pushing the thrust levers to the toga detent, the aircraft systems can still remain locked in the approach mode. This can cause the plane to continue tracking the ILS beam, potentially leading to an undesired descent. When a go-around is initiated during an ILS approach without selecting toga thrust, the auto flight system remains locked in approach mode, keeping both the localizer and glide slope modes engaged. This can cause the aircraft to inadvertently capture a secondary ILS beam, sometimes at angles as steep as 9 or even 15 degrees off the primary glide slope. This false trajectory can result in abrupt and unexpected changes to the aircraft's flight path, significantly increasing pilot workload as they work to stabilize the aircraft. In the event of a discontinued approach or a missed approach where the aircraft has overflown the last waypoint, the flight management system may lose the designated destination. In such cases, it's crucial for the crew to manually enter a new destination in the FMS. This could either be the current airport for another approach attempt or a diversion to an alternate airport. Ensuring the FMS is correctly updated prevents the aircraft from entering an undesired navigation state and allows for a smooth transition into the new flight plan, especially when ATC issues instructions to reroute or divert. To summarize, Airbus has enhanced its FCOM and FCTM to incorporate these updates. The standard go-around procedure remains the preferred method when performance criteria such as obstacle clearance and climb gradients are in question. However, for situations where toga thrust isn't necessary, the new discontinuation technique offers a safer alternative. Our popular A320 tech quizzes are now part of an exclusive newsletter membership designed to provide you with even more value. As a member, you'll receive four brand new A320 tech quizzes every month, one each Monday, delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also receive exclusive deep dives into A320 systems, procedures, and techniques that go beyond this YouTube content. And you'll also gain access to bonus content and other surprises to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. If you're interested, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to sign up today. Thanks for tuning in, and let's take your A320 knowledge to the next level.